Hey everybody, this is Nick, and I'm coming to you with a really quick data viz tip when you don't, when you want to do something different with your grid lines, or you'd want to sort of eliminate your grid lines, but you still want to give some visual notice of, uh, visual visual notice of the estimation between different intervals on your axis. So this comes from a LinkedIn post that I saw from Kobe W. He's a data viz consultant, and he was kind of giving an alternative to grid lines. So don't do a chart like this. He's saying uh, with no grid lines because there's no data labels there. It's really hard to estimate but if you want to you could get rid of the grid lines and also add these white sort of grid lines on top of the bar now of course when I see his posts like this I want to know exactly how I can do this in Excel in the comments he said that he usually moves the grid lines in front of the bars I'm not aware of a way to do that in Excel and keep it an alive and active chart but I thought maybe we could do a, a combination chart with lines and bars. You could do that too, but you have to manipulate some of the data source. And there's one more way to do this that I thought of that I think is maybe even easier and a little bit more fun. So we're just going to make this one giant clustered column chart. So here is my data source. These are the data right here. You have to set up um, individual data source for uh, series for each of the grid line intervals that you want. So in this case, I want 20% intervals. You can see the chart that I made over here as as an example, it's going to go from 0 to 100%, and then every 20% uh, percent, there's going to be this white grid line over the bars. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight the entire data series right here. We're going to insert a column chart, and you can see you get this really crazy clustered column. And I'm going to get rid of the title, I'm going to get rid of the legend, delete, and I'm going to get rid of the chart border. And then you can see that the legend over here is, or the axis over here is every 10%. Let's manipulate that, let's change that to uh, every 20%. So we're going to do that. And then I'm going to get rid of the grid lines. Now if you click on a, a, a series of columns here, you see where that is pulling from in the data source table. This is the data, this blue bar, these blue bars are the data that I want to show. The other bars are going to become our grid lines. So let's go over here to our 80%. Uh, this is our 80% line. Click on those orange bars. I'm going to right click and then you click on add trend line. Now that creates a trend line going across the entire bar. Now the thing is we need this to stretch the entire width of the chart. So over on the tr format trend line uh, menu under the forward forecast we're going to change that to 0.5 and under the backward forecast we're going to change that to 0.5. And once we do that that should work. Let's see if that works. Yeah, it puts it, uh, it puts it through the entire chart. Now the other thing we're going to do is change the color and the line weight. So we're going to go ahead to the paint bucket, make this a white line, and then we're going to change the dash type to solid. Now we're going to do this for the 60, 40, and 20. So right click, add trend line, make sure to update the forecast to 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Sometimes it gives me a little can be a little bit tricky there. You just got to make sure that you're entering it correctly. And then we're going to update the white, white solid, and the dash type. And we're going to do this for the 40%. Add trend line. Make sure to click that trend line. 0.5 and 0.5. The paint bucket will turn it white and solid. And one more for our 20%. Oops, don't want to add the data labels there. I do want to add a trend line. Add trend line, perfect. One more here, 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, perfect. Update this to white and solid. Okay, now we're almost there. Now what we need to do is set each of those bars, each of the columns that I don't want to show as no fill. So we're going to click on these, update the paint bucket to no fill. Click on the 60%, no fill. Oops, no fill there. Click on the 40%, no fill. 20%, no fill. And it's really skinny, but we can update this. Click on any of the bars here. We're going to update the series overlap. So on the Format Data Series menu, set series overlap to 100%. Just slide that all the way over. And then let's do the gap width maybe about 50%. And now there you have the most beautiful uh, column chart there with those white grid lines. Now the cool thing about this chart type is that if I didn't really want the column treatment, maybe I want to change this to bars, horizontal bars. You can do that with this uh, chart type. I'm going to go ahead and and copy this chart. We're going to paste it over. And all I need to do now, I'll just work with this one right here. 
Uh, go up to the chart design tab and then click on change chart type. We're gonna change it to a bar instead. And all of your formatting is still there. You just need to do that over series overlap one more time. So click on the bar there, series overlap to 100%. And there you have it. Now here it goes group eight to group uh, one. If you wanted it to be sorted in a different way, we could go ahead and click on the Y axis over here on the format axis menu. We would click on categories in reverse order maximum category, put that axis back, uh, the x-axis back down on the bottom, and now you have a beautiful horizontal bar chart with those white grid lines. So this is just another way uh, that you can think about doing that little hack if you don't want to add grid lines to your chart. If you like this video, I hope you give it a thumbs up and make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it. You'll get notified every time I post a new video in data design, usually PowerPoint, Excel, or Word. I had a great time making this for you as always, and I can't wait to see you all next time.